Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of Sweet Red Poppy. I'm Kimberly and today we are going to be preparing for Christmas. We are making these really fun fur Christmas stockings. They're so beautiful, so fun to make, and I have tons of tips to share with you today. So recently I went into Pottery Barn, fell in love with some of their fur stockings, but the price tag was a little bit out of my budget. So I figured I could just run to Joanne, grab all the supplies that I needed, and make my own for a fraction of the price. So today I'm going to teach you how to do just that, make these fun stockings for your family, and save some money in the process. For this tutorial, you will need fabric for your stocking. You want a bottom fabric as well as a top contrast piece. You'll also want one of these fluffy balls, some pins, a seam ripper, just in case, some ribbon, iron-on, scissors or a rotary cutter, a rotary mat, a Cricut weeding tool if you want to personalize, and a lint roller. So the very first thing that you'll want to do to get started on this tutorial is to print out your pattern pieces. These are free downloads that are available on sweetredpoppy.com. So go ahead and print those out and then tape them together. Yours might look a little bit different than mine. I've cut mine out of cardstock because I'm planning on sewing quite a few stockings this Christmas and I wanted to make sure that my pattern could stand up to all that wear and tear. I want to share a few tips for working with fur fabric because it can be a little bit tricky. So one of the things I want to talk about first is that it's easiest to cut fur from the back side and I'll show you how this works. So you want to lay your pattern piece down and I'm just going to line it up with some stripes. So I'm going to use a few pins and just pin this pattern piece in place. Just so it doesn't shift around while I'm cutting. So when you're sewing with fur, one of the things that's important is to flip your fabric over so the right side is facing upwards. And then you're going to cut from the back and you're going to stick your scissors in between the fibers. So you're not just going to cut straight into the fibers, otherwise you cut all of the little hairs on your fur off and then it looks like your fur had a bad, bad haircut. So we want to carefully go around all of those fibers so that we keep those pieces of hair intact. So I'm just going to slide it in and start cutting. So if you were doing this pattern with just a regular cotton, then you could just cut both of your pattern pieces at the same time. But because I want to keep those fibers intact, I'm gonna do it one piece at a time. So I'm just gonna cut all of this. And then I'll cut my second one next. Okay, so I have this first piece is cut out. You can just look at the front kind of to get an idea of what your stocking is going to look like. I'm loving this red and black, it's so fun. So I'm gonna take this off and cut my next piece. So don't forget that if you're cutting out fur, you're gonna do one at a time and make sure that you have two opposite pieces to go together. So working with fur can be a little bit tricky because the fur loves to shed. When you're cutting it, it's just gonna go everywhere. So I like to keep a little lint roller on hand and after I cut something, I'll just go over that seam that I cut with a lint roller just to kind of capture all of those fibers. Another option, you could use your vacuum with the hose attachment or you could even just throw the fabric in the dryer. So for the next one, I've made sure to flip my pattern piece over. I'm just gonna line it up with this side because I already have one side that is positioned the way that I want it. So this one can just go anyway. So I'm just throwing a pin in there just so it doesn't wiggle while I'm trying to cut it. And just sliding my scissors in there and cutting around. Okay, so that one's all cut out. Now I have both pieces and I have a big fur mess. So I'm just gonna take my sticky tape really quick and just get rid of all of this fur. My stocky pieces are all cut out, so now I'm going to cut out the contrasting band. And that's the piece that goes at the top, so it's right here, and that's where your iron-on is going to be placed. So I am doing a black piece of contrast, and here's my pattern piece. Now, there's something really important I want to talk about. If you're planning on using fur, 
you need to make sure that this piece is bigger than this piece. So normally, once it was folded, it would be about the same size once both of them were sewn. Once your contrast and your stocking were sewn, they should match up perfectly. If you're using cotton or something that's a thinner weight material, then that's exactly how you want it to be. But if you're using a fur, you want to add an extra inch or even two inches. And the reason for that is this is really thick fabric, so when you sew it all together, it needs to be a little bit bigger than the circumference of this just to fit and to lay nicely. I have my pattern piece in front of me and I am just going to add about two inches to compensate for how thick my fur is. I have both of my stockings that are going to go together and then I have my contrast and I just need one more thing. I have some ribbon over here that I'm going to cut as well. And how long the ribbon is, is really up to you. This is what's going to hang your stocking from the mantle. So you can decide if you want it really long or short. I'm actually going to attach this fun little pom-pom ball. So just gonna kind of visually eyeball it. I think I'll make it this long. Now that all of my pieces are cut out, I want to prep everything for sewing. So I'm gonna lay this out in front of me. I wanna put it so that my right side is facing upwards and then I'm going to put the other right side facing this one. So you always wanna put your pretty sides together when you're sewing. And then I'm going to take some pins and just pin things in place. One of the things to keep in mind if you're working with a fur fabric, you want to make sure that all of your fur is pushed inside of your seam allowance. And as you sew, you can just double check that and kind of push it in. a good idea throughout this process of pinning just to turn it over and make sure that everything's lining up on both sides. Sometimes it looks like something's lining up on one side and then you flip it over and realize that it didn't quite line up on the other. My stocking is completely pinned so I'm going to set this aside and start working on my top contrast piece and what you're going to want to do is lay it out in front of you and fold it together. It's going to be right sides on right sides and you want the shortest end to line up. And then you're just going to place a few pins along the short edge. I'm using kind of a suede fabric, so I'm gonna give it a few extra pins because it likes to shift around while I'm sewing. So this is all ready to sew. We're actually going to sew just straight down this side. And then on the stocking, we're going to sew all the way around here leaving the top open. I grabbed my sewing machine and now I'm ready to start putting my stocking together. If you have a walking foot, now's a good time to put your walking foot on your sewing machine because that's just gonna help everything to go a little bit smoother. It'll keep your fabrics together and just feed everything really smoothly. To start, I'm going to sew my contrasting band. On this pattern, we're using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to line it up with the side of my foot don't forget to backstitch when you're beginning this seam. The reason that you want to backstitch on this stocking, you always want to backstitch when you're sewing, but on this stocking especially, is because sometimes you're putting heavy items into the stocking, which puts a lot of pressure and weight on your seams, and you don't want them coming apart when you put something inside the stocking. So make sure to backstitch as you start. Pull your pins out and then keep sewing. And then as you approach the end of the seam, you want to make sure to backstitch again. And that will just lock your seam in. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and then set this aside. And now it's time to work on my stocking. Again, if you have a walking foot, go ahead and put it on right now. That will just help everything to go a little bit. As I'm sewing, I'm taking a little time just to brush all of the fur inside of the seam allowance. That's just gonna give you a better looking finish. Now probably the trickiest part of this whole thing is sewing around the curved foot if you're new to sewing. And what you can do, first off, if you're super nervous about sewing around a curve, you can just draw your seam allowance in with a washable marker. Or when you come to it, what I like to do is put my needle in the down position and then I'll do a few stitches, I'll raise my presser foot, and I'll just pivot a little bit and then keep sewing and repeat that process until I'm all the way around the curve. And there's no reason that you have to go super fast, so just take your time on the curve and just keep sewing. 
as you're sewing, you can just take a second to make sure that you're sewing through both layers. The worst thing is finding out after you're done sewing that you missed a layer, especially with this thick, bulky fabric, it can be easy to miss it and not notice it. So you might want to stop and check that. I'm almost to the top, so I'm going to slow down and just take a minute to back stitch. Just to lock that seam in. And I'm going to cut my thread. So now the bottom of my stocking is sewn and I'm just going to take a few minutes to trim this up and just tidy it, tidy those seams up a little bit. I am going to attach the top now. So in order to attach this, what you want to do is fold it in half. So you're just sliding it down on top of itself so that the wrong sides are facing each other. I'm going to slide a pin in here just to line up my seam allowances. And then I'm going to fold this in half and I want to find the halfway point on the opposite side. The next step is to fold this contrast piece in half. So I'm just going to fold it in half. You just wiggle it down. I'm going to make sure that those raw edges are lining up perfectly. And what I like to do is line up my seam allowances on this side. I just put a pin through there so I know exactly where they're at. And then I'm going to find the halfway point on the other side. I'm going to stick a pin through there as well. I'm going to grab my stocking and what I'm going to do is slide this over my stocking. Now it might seem like it's being done wrong because your stocking's inside out and your contrast is right side out, but this is actually just going to give you a nice clean finish when we turn it around. And I'm going to line up my seam allowance with my pin. And this just makes sure that everything is distributed evenly. And same on this side. Then you can go ahead and throw a few extra pins around because remember your contrast is a little bit larger than your stocking. So you might need to stretch it just a little bit, but when we turn it right side out, it's going to look really good. So the easiest way to sew this is to slide it underneath your presser foot and we're just going to shift it as we go. So slide it right under. There we go. So I want to make sure that everything is lined up. So I have three different layers that I'm going to be sewing through. And the whole time I'm sewing, I'm just going to be checking that everything is lining up. And you might need to pull your fur just a little bit to get it to stretch to the size of the contrast. Now that I've come to the beginning of the seam, I just want to take a minute to back stitch and lock my seam in place. Before I turn this right side out, I just want to go through here and just do a little bit of trimming. So along the toe, I'm going to cut little triangles and that will just get rid of some of the thickness and the bulkiness when I turn this right side out. So when you're cutting, you want to cut close to but not through your stitching. And then on this side, I'm going to cut close to but not through the seam allowance. And I'm just doing these little snips and what that will do is allow this seam to open up when I turn it right side out. And over here, I'm just gonna do some more triangles. Now that everything has been sewn and clipped, we're going to go ahead and turn our stocking right side out. So go ahead, put your hand all the way down to the toe and then pull it right side out. And then you can just wiggle these seam allowances to turn the toe out completely. Make sure that everything is turned out. At this point, you wanna go ahead and attach your hanger. So I'm using ribbon to hang this and I'm going to attach it at the back. So here's the back of the seam and I just wanna attach it right on top. So back and forth a few times. Back stitch forward and then cut those threads. 
So now I have my little ribbon hanging down and at this point you can attach whatever you'd like. You could put little jingle bells on, you can put fluffy pom-poms on, you could leave it alone, it's really up to you. I have this fluffy pom-pom that I want to attach to mine. So I'm just gonna remove this little sticker and tie it on. So tie it on and then you can trim the excess ribbon. And now you have something kind of fun that adds a little bit of whimsy. At this point, you can decide if you want to personalize your stocking, then you can add some personaliz personalization at the top. I'm going to go ahead and put my name on this stocking, um, and I am going to use my Cricut machine to do that. So let me grab my Cricut, and we're going to start cutting some iron-on. So I'm going to take this roll of iron-on. I'm using a white glitter iron-on and I'm going to place it on my mat. And when you're using iron-on, it's really important to remember that the pretty side faces downwards towards the mat. Okay. And the reason for that is that this is going to be mirrored and you'll be peeling away the backing and then it has a protective front layer, which keeps it safe from all of the heat that you're applying on it. So I am just going to apply it here and then I'm gonna grab my cricket. So I've inserted my glitter iron on into the machine. It's on my mat and it's ready to go. But first I need to go into Cricut's design space, make sure that I've selected the correct material and the most important part, <laughs> make sure that you selected mirror. Otherwise it will come out and it will be backwards. And then I am going to turn my dial to custom so that I can select glitter vinyl or glitter iron on. And then I'm just gonna press my Cricut button and it's going to start cutting. I'm going to flip my mat so it's face down and then I'm going to peel my mat away from my iron on. And the reason I do that is it prevents any cracking from happening and just keeps your iron on intact without any bubbles. Now I'm going to take my weeding tool and I'm just going to weed away all of the excess. So I brought my easy press over and I preheated it. If you don't have an easy press, you can just use an iron for this step. And now I'm going to place my iron on onto my stocking. And the reason I like to do this as the very last step, obviously you could put it on sooner, um, earlier in the process, but what I like to do is wait till the very end. That way I can make sure that everything is lining up and center exactly where I want it, just in case something gets a little bit off during the process. I'm going to go ahead and warm up the top contrast just so that the iron-on will adhere a little bit better. And then I'm going to place my iron-on. Now that I have exactly where I want it, I have an extra piece and I'm just going to cover up this material just to make sure I don't burn anything. So go ahead and press your easy press button and give it a good pressing. And then you'll just slowly peel away your transfer sheet. Now my stocking is complete and I can just hang it from this little tab on my mantle. And it looks like I have a few more stockings to make. Thanks so much for tuning in to Sweet Red Poppy. I loved sharing this tutorial with you and I can't wait to see what you guys make. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any of my sewing, cricket, and crafting tutorials. I have so many more videos that are coming and I can't wait to share them with you guys. And in the comments below, I want to know, what are you planning on making with this tutorial? Are you going to sew it out of fur? Maybe you're using cotton. What are your plans? I can't wait to see what you guys are making. Don't forget to tune in next week because I'll have another fun video. I'll see you guys later.